because it's a generalization of this. If you can do this one, you can do that one, because it just means you put in a particular value for R. How, how do we know when we're trying to, if, you know, if we were trying to do this reduction ourselves, how would we know that we could set R? I mean, it seems like R is something that someone else sets, that we have to do it for any general R. That's right. That's right. You do have to do it for any general R. So we're going to assume somebody's got it done for some general R. Right? Let's assume somebody's figured this out. I'm going to convince you that they're lying. Somebody's figured this out for some general R. They know how to do it no matter what R you give them. That's to your advantage, this, this objection you just brought up. Anybody can do this for any R, for any M. You guys know how. And I want to solve this problem. I want to solve the problem where I'm given a machine and I want to know if it's empty or not. So I just give you my machine. And I give you a finite state machine that happens to equal the empty set. And you can do this. So you can certainly do it for my particular finite state machine that equals the empty set. So that generalization is to my advantage as the prover to show you that this is hard. I want to solve a problem that's much easier than this. That's for a specific machine. So if I know that problem's hard already, then certainly this problem's hard also. I'm convincing you this problem is hard specifically because it's more general than another problem, which I already know is hard. But if we were to reduce the other way, then? There's no obvious direction to reduce this to this. Okay. No, definitely not. Okay. No, you don't reduce from general cases to special cases. You reduce from special cases to general cases. Because reductions are, remember, this symbol. So you're basically saying that this is easier than that. I'm saying that this is easier than that. So if that's undecidable, then so is that undecidable. Does that make sense, Doug? It's a good question. Are there other questions about this, this restriction reduction? Chris, OK. Yeah. Nodding deeply, OK. Let's switch this question. Does a given Turing machine accept a given regular set? What if I don't want to ask a question that's quite so general? So I want to make it you know, maybe something that, that has a chance of being decidable. This doesn't have any chance. Because if I could do this, I can do this. What about this question? Does a given Turing machine accept a language which is regular? I'm not giving it a particular set to check against. I'm just asking whether the language it actually generates is equal to some regular set. I don't know which one it's supposed to be. But is it one of the infinite number of regular sets? Could it be one of them? Maybe that's something we can do. Being able to solve this problem doesn't let us solve this problem. If I give this machine over to this person who has this solution, and they say, sure, the machine you gave me accepts some regular set, I have no idea what that regular set is. And I have no idea whether my machine accepts empty or not. So this is a different question altogether. This isn't a question of, I give you a Turing machine and a regular set, and are they the same? I'm just giving you a Turing machine, and I want to know, does it accept some regular set? Is its language regular? Is well, this, yeah. Is this, is this the same as saying you can use a Turing machine to a uh, finite state machine? Yes. It's a, here's a Turing machine. Is there a way to turn it into a finite state machine? That's another way of thinking about it. Sure. Is there some way to make this Turing machine into a finite state machine where you stop using the tape? Is it the same as some language that, that is a finite state machine? Sure, it's the same way to look at it. So this problem is also undecidable. But it's not an obvious restriction reduction. It's going to be a similar reduction to what we did at the beginning of the class, and it's going to come from here. And it's going to be the same kind of trick that Peter didn't like before. But maybe this time we'll be more used to it, so it won't seem so objectionable. The m and the x, we're going to have to convert it to another machine. And here's what we're hoping. We're hoping that the solution to this question will give us a solution to this question. So that if somebody could decide this, then they help us decide the halting problem. And we know the halting problem is not decidable. So then we know that this is not decidable. So let's think of a way to take our general machine and a given input, change it into a different program, so that if that new program happens to be the same as a finite state machine, then the original machine you were given accepts the original string that you were given. 
if and only if. Let's make a new machine so that the answer to this question about it being a regular set tells you the answer to the original question about whether a machine accepts a given string. We'll call this, uh, I don't know. We call it MP for Peter. That doesn't mean you have to come up with it. You just have to be skeptical. All right. So what's MP going to look like? Let's try some things, whether they work or not, and see what works. If we pick something that doesn't work, we'll find something that does work pretty quickly. Here's my method whenever I don't really understand what's going on. I pick the last thing we did, and I try that. And I figure out why it doesn't work. And then I fix it. So Michael did the last thing. Let's try the same thing Michael did last time. Michael said last time, let's chuck this if statement in front. So if the input is x, you know, we'll actually run the machine on x. And if the input isn't x, we just reject everything. Right? Let's assume we just do the same thing. Because if we see why that doesn't work, maybe we'll get a sense of how to fix it. Right, let's do the same thing. Let's do the same trick. If the input's x, we run the machine on x. Otherwise, we reject the string no matter what the input is to this pro machine. This is a machine that takes input. We're going to compare its input to x. If it's the same, we'll run it. If it's not the same, we reject. Now, let's see what happens with that machine if we send it to this program. If this program says the language is regular, what do you know about this machine MP. Remember, MP, the way Michael gave it to us, accepts either the single string x or it accepts absolutely nothing. Right? So if this thing says the machine accepts something regular, then what do you know? That it. Do you know anything about whether you can distinguish between accepting x and the empty set? Those are the two possibilities for this machine. It either accepts a single string x or it accepts the empty set. If I give this machine to somebody, they say, hey, I know that this machine accepts a regular set. Do you know whether it's a single string it accepts or it's the empty set? You don't know because both those things are regular sets. right? So knowing that the language of this machine is regular doesn't help you distinguish between whether it's x or empty. Knowing whether it's empty helps you distinguish between whether it's x or empty. But knowing whether it's regular doesn't help you distinguish. What if they tell you that it's not regular? Will they ever tell you it's not regular? It's going to guarantee to be a single string or the empty set. So actually, it's kind of a silly thing to give this person because you know what they're going to tell you. They're always going to tell you that the answer is regular. Not only won't you learn anything from their answer, but you can predict their answer before you give it to them. That is like a sure fire, you know, waving the red flags. Don't use this reduction. You want to get a lot out of this person. You are milking this person for everything. You're milking them for an undecidable problem. You're getting everything from them to solve this undecidable problem. If you can actually predict their answer, then you haven't done very much in this reduction. You've really done something good in the reduction if when you send it to this person, you have no idea what the answer is at all. But when you get the answer, then it helps you go back here and get the correct answer. So it's a good hint in a reduction that if you have any idea what the answer is after your reduction is done and you give it to that person with a solution, it's a bad reduction. So we've got to fix this reduction. We've got to fix it in such a way that the choices between the things that it might accept don't end up being either a single string or the empty set. But what should the choices be? Either something that's a regular set or something that isn't a regular set. Let's fiddle with this machine so that we know that when it's all done, accepting all its strings and doing what it does, that either it accepts a regular set or a non-regular set. And let's have that somehow depend on whether the original machine accepts x or not. So what can we try to do? We can still look at the input x and that came from here and decide what this machine should do, but we have to do something different than what Michael said before. Chris, do you have an idea? Are you thinking uh, of something? Convert it to something like that plus uh, reverse. Oh, so, so Chris is trying to think of something that's definitely not a regular set. Why don't we think of something simpler that's not a regular set? What's the first thing you can think of that's not a regular set? Uh, 